This is part 78 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss deadlocks in SQL Server. So when can a deadlock occur? In a database, a deadlock occurs when two or more processes have a resource locked and each process requests a lock on the resource that another process has already locked. Neither of the transactions here can move forward as each one is waiting for the other to release the lock. The diagram here explains the scenario. We've got two resources here, table A and table B, and two processes, process A and process B. Both these processes want to update both these resources, that is table A and table B. So process A starts first and it starts updating table A. Since no other process has already acquired an exclusive lock on table A, process A is allowed to acquire an exclusive lock on that table. And then process B starts and it wants to update table B first. Since no other process has already acquired a lock on it, process B is allowed to acquire an exclusive lock on it. At this point, process A is done updating table A and now it wants to update table B. Both the update statements are part of the same transaction. Now process A is blocked from acquiring a lock on table B because process B has already locked it. Finally, process B is done updating table B and now it wants to update table A but then process B is not allowed to acquire a lock on table A because process A has already locked that resource. So in this case, process B is waiting on process A to release the lock on table A. Similarly, process A is waiting on process B to release the lock on resource table B. So here we have a deadlock situation. When deadlocks like this occur, SQL Server will choose one of the processes as the deadlock victim and roll back that process so the other process can move forward. Let's look at this in action. I've created these two tables, table A and table B, and both the tables at the moment have got exactly one row within each of them. And here's the SQL script to create those tables and populate them with data. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. I also have two transactions here. Notice transaction one wants to update both the tables, table A and table B. Transaction one is updating table A first and then table B. Whereas if you look at transaction two, it's updating table B first and then table A. So let's execute part of our transaction. So Transaction 1 started updating table A, so transaction 1 has acquired an exclusive lock on table A. Now let's go ahead and execute part of our transaction 2. So transaction 2 started updating table B. Okay, so at the moment transaction 1 has an exclusive lock on table A and transaction B has an exclusive lock on table B. Now Let's execute the second update statement in transaction 1. Now this will be blocked because process B, that is our transaction 2, has already blocked, you know, locked table B. So look at that, transaction 2 is blocked from acquiring an exclusive lock on that table. Now when we do uh, I mean, when we execute the second update statement, that's part of our transaction two, since transaction one has already locked that resource, you know, this statement execution will be blocked. Look at that, both the, um, you know, transactions are blocked now. And after a few seconds, notice that transaction two, you know, is chosen as the uh, deadlock victim and it terminates with an error. So if you look at the error message, let's actually copy this to a notepad. Transaction, you know, with that process ID 56 was deadlocked on lock resources with another process and has been chosen as the deadlock victim, rerun the transaction. So if you want to complete the work that transaction two is doing, you will have to rerun the transaction. And if you look at the data that we have in the table, it should have been the updates that transaction one has issued. Now the select statements here are blocked because we have not committed our transaction. So let's go ahead and commit our transaction one. And now if you look at the data, look at that, whatever updates transaction one performed, you know, that's the data that we see in both the tables. 
And here are the examples that we just discussed. In our next video, we'll discuss the criteria that SQL Server uses to choose a deadlock victim. Thank you for listening and have a great day.